The history of yodeling and how it survived. A team of researchers from Inseburuku has compared the historical development of yodeling as between Switzerland and Tirol thanks to funding from the Austrian Science Fund. This is the first study of the eventful history of yodeling and yodel songs from the Alps in the 19th century to their urban popularity today. In the 19th century, after Tyrolean vocal groups had made yodeling internationally known and popular, Tyrolean songs with yodel parts caught on also in Switzerland. 100 years later, at the beginning of the 20th century, some passionate Swiss yodelers founded the Eitgenasesho Yodelapeabant in order to promote Swiss yodeling and to curb Tirolere as they dubbed the undesirable yodel influence from Tirol. At mid-century, when yodel songs originating in Tirol had already become popular in Europe and the United States, the efforts of the Swiss to preserve their own folk music came at a time when nationalist tendencies were becoming stronger. From the end of the 19th century, yodeling was increasingly instrumentalized for political purposes. Moreover, yodeling was defined as belonging to an archetypically German cultural heritage, explains Raymond Amman from the University of Innsbruck. In his recently completed project Tirolere in der Schubaitze, which was funded by the Austrian Science Fund, the ethnomusicologist examined the historical development of yodeling in Tirol and Switzerland and focused inter alia on social aspects. A source of identity. Amman's research has shown, for instance, that yodeling fulfilled an identity-defining function for Tirol as far back as the Napoleonic Wars. There, the yodel served then as an acoustic symbol of rebellion against the French and Bavarian troops. Whilst in Switzerland, folk music festivals devoted to yodeling, such as the Uspunen festivals in Interaken near Berner, were organized to celebrate the indigenous folk traditions and to foster a sense of unity among the urban and rural population. Such measures ensured the survival of yodeling in Switzerland concrete steps to promote Swiss yodeling and push back the Tyrolean influence. However, were taken only at the beginning of the 20th century when the Swiss Yodeling Association was founded. From patriotism to a shout of freedom, in the first half of the 20th century, governments in both countries used folk songs and songs with yodel parts for their respective purposes, even if their motivation differed, as we know today. In Austria, singing and yodeling were considered during the Nazi era as something of a patriotic duty and the regime supported yodeling practice in various ways. In Switzerland, the first written yodel school manual was published in 1943 with the goal to promote the proper Swiss yodel and to define its distinct form that differs from yodeling in national socialistic neighboring countries. The ulterior motive was to affirm national identity and distance the Swiss from the Nazi regime. Later, in the 1960s and 1970s, yodeling was ridiculed as musical chauvinism and largely disappeared from view of the urban population. In recent years, yodeling has seen a surprising revival under new auspices. What is more, its popularity has never been greater than it is at the beginning of the 21st century. Fans can now be found among middle-class urbanites as well. Yodeling and related vocal forms such as Tudulun and Chichen have found their way into the modern lifestyle. They are without reservations combined with other pastimes such as hiking or even yoga, qigong or pelades. They have become a therapeutic tool designed to liberate practitioners from the everyday stress. Today, yodeling is seen as something that connects people and no longer as a way of distinguishing oneself from others, confirms Raymond Amen. People who are interested in yodeling nowadays do not see it as a means of drawing cultural demarcation lines and identity building, but as an opportunity for a new personal, musical experience, both as an individual and in groups. Yodeling goes world music. Haman suggests that the reason for this trend lies in recent music history. Luyo Pokusu music emanated from the Austropop movement. Initially, the lyrics were satirical, and in the 1990s, these songs, with their references to home and country and their musical intensity, triggered an emotional response in the listeners. 
At the same time, Amman explains, the booming trend of world music meant that people became more open to popular music from abroad, which in turn sharpened interest in local musical exoticisms. This new predilection for yodeling sometimes brings enthusiasts from Austria, Switzerland and Germany together at international workshops that advocate cross-border yodel dialogue. The results of the recently completed project will be available here in the book Kirore in der Schubaichi, which will be published by Unibeji Tetsubelago Bagono in spring 2020.